Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me today is LSU women's basketball assistant coach, Gary Reedus. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's a Tuesday morning um, in June, and we're talking women's basketball. I mean, you know, the NBA Finals just wrapped up. I do, like, some NBA draft stuff for fun. So mm-hmm. it's it's always basketball season around here. Right? Always. Always. Yeah, um, I mean, as a Spurs fan, too, then you get the draft as Victor Wimbanyama. I'm just – I'm in heaven right now. Okay. Okay. Who else y'all going to get? Who y'all going to pair with him? Y'all need, we, y'all need some help. Well, we need a point guard. Chris Paul? We, Chris Fred Van Vliet's been thrown around. Chris Paul, you know, we need a point guard. <laughs> That's, okay, yeah. We can't have Trey Jones going back there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, Manny Point. As much as I love him, he's uh-huh. back a point guard. Gotcha. Anyways, that'll be, that'll be the, the summer for me. But – uh. <laughs> Let's let's talk about you because that's what everybody wants to talk about. Because after this national championship, obviously your first year here, um, everybody's like, hey, you got to get Gary Reedus on the podcast. I was like, all right, we got to ask him pressing questions. And um, but before we do that, I want to I want to talk about like your history a little bit more because obviously reading through it, you know, I can read through it and stuff, but I want to hear it from you more so. And obviously, you went through playing overseas, playing in four countries, all the um, experiences there, but. What pushed you into coaching? Did you always know you wanted to get into coaching uh, while you were playing, or was it something that happened, you know, naturally? Or what? What was that like? No, uh, I never knew I wanted to coach. I, I mean, yeah, I never knew I wanted to coach. That that wasn't really the plan. I I was planning on playing for a really long time. Like that was always my plan. Uh, I was playing ball. I was in Mexico. And I was coming off of a knee injury and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do next, but I, I I could feel that my my career was, you know, just kind of coming to an end. It I, I felt like I could still play, but I didn't feel like I could make a career out of it the way I wanted to. So I knew that it was time to kind of do something else. And I was going to keep playing until I figured out exactly what I wanted to do next. And my sister asked if I wanted to come in GA. She was at the University of West Georgia at the time. Mm -hmm. And she hit me up and I wasn't really thinking it was anything that serious. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. I went and I was there and I fell in love with it immediately. Just kind of being on the court in a different capacity. uh, I think that it was just, it was really natural. So, I mean, yeah, I, I went there. I was there for a year. From there, I went to Delta State, which was kind of unexpected as well. Uh, Craig Roden was the was the head coach there. He he was my sister GA for him when she was mm-hmm. at the University of West Alabama. So he gave me a call. He wanted me to come there. I was there. Uh, I was there for a year. And I was going into my second year. We had brought in a really good recruiting class. I was really excited. It was my first time, like, getting to recruit. Uh, And we were going into the second year, excited about our team. And around, like, it had to be, like, late August, early September. I got a call from Sharika Wright. I'll never Mm -hmm. forget it. I didn't know what was going on. She was at Vanderbilt at the time. Yeah. Uh, She told me they had an opening. I thought it was for, like, support staff or something. She said it was for an assistant spot. And I talked to to her a couple times. Then I talked to Steph, Stephanie White, who's the head coach of the Connecticut Sun now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I talked to her. We just kind of hit it off instantly. And she – they brought me down there. They offered me the job. I went to Vanderbilt. I was there for three years. Uh, from there, we got let go. Uh, I went to SMU for a year, and now I'm here. Now you're here. Um, yeah. What? Because obviously, that's that's kind of a quick, you know, turnaround. That's five, six years, and then boom, you're at LSU. How did you learn enough at those stops to prepare you for to where you could get to LSU and immediately be like, all right, I'm on top of it. Like there's. I, I don't know. Maybe there was a lot of a learning curve getting to LSU, but it seemed like you stepped on campus and it was like, all right, I know what I need to do and I can uh, accomplish that. Uh, I think my background in Division Two 
I think it helped me a lot kind of going through the coaching ranks just because I was the only assistant, mm -hmm. you know, when I was at uh, Delta State. When I was at West Georgia, you know, it was – my sister was the assistant and I was the GA, uh, and it was just us two. So I had to do scouts. You know, I had to do player development. You know, I helped out with recruiting there. And at Delta State, I did camps, scouts, uh, all the recruiting, academics. Yeah. Like, I did everything. So I had to learn how to do everything. Uh, and it helped. It helped with, with it all. So when I moved on to Vanderbilt and I didn't have to do everything, and, you know, a lot of what I was doing was centered around player development and recruiting, like, I was like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, so do coming to LSU where it's already like a well-oiled machine and everybody is kind of in place with what they do and, and what I do is mainly, you know, recruiting and player development, I can do that. Like th there was there was no need for me to have to – like I didn't have to adjust to yeah. anything. I just kind of came in and did what I naturally know how to do. Who who reached out to you about the LSU job initially? In Milwaukee. Oh, I said <laughs> Yeah. A lot of people ask, like, did you know Kim Mulkey before? I didn't, but I mean I kind of did. Uh we met, we met one time out recruiting. We were in mm -hmm. Dallas. Uh she was watching Michaela, and I was watching one of Michaela's teammates. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of sat together. Because uh, Daff was there, and I knew Daff. I've known Daff forever. Daff and my wife are best friends. Yeah. So uh, I think Coach Moki knew who I was, but she had never met me. So we we just kind of talked all day. Like we we just kind of talked. We talked about basketball. We talked about players. We talked about baseball. We talked about her son Kramer. Like we just kind of talked, and it was it was easy kind of conversation. I didn't really think anything of it. Uh, one of my coworkers at SMU at the time played for, for Coach Mulkey at Baylor. So, and they talked. They talked a lot. And I think mm -hmm. that she would always just kind of be like, tell G I said, hey, you know. Yeah. And I didn't think anything of it. Uh, but one day we were we had workouts at SMU, and I looked at my phone, and I had a text from Coach Mulkey. And she wanted to talk, and we talked that night. And that night. She offered me the job. Yeah. That happens quick. Happens yeah. quick, man. It's always crazy. <laughs> um, now, talking about the recruiting side of things for you, like that's that's obviously where fans know you and they know your personality and stuff like that. What, was it just natural? I mean, when you got into college basketball, it was like, all right, I can connect with people. I can connect with, with – young adults and everything like that and just get to know them and get them to like kind of read them in a way that I guess a lot of people can't because this isn't easy it's not mm -hmm. easy to be a elite I mean recruiter at any school in the country really and so yeah. what what has led you to um be good at that uh I, I think I learned from some people and I just kind of took some things from them uh my sister was always when I watched her recruit she would kind of zone in on one recruit and she was just the recruit. It was almost like they had known each other forever because she was just being so normal talking to like whoever that recruit was that she was dealing with. Like she didn't really deal with a lot of different recruits at a time. Like she just would deal with like that one or like those two recruits and she would always get it done when, whenever it was like, that recruit that she was focusing on, she always would get them. And my college roommate, he was he was coaching in in D two at the time as well. I just saw how hard he was just going after everybody and how much time he dedicated to it. Uh, so I kind of took those two things coming up in D two, and I put my own like little twist on it. And I was just myself. Like I, I, I'm just myself. I'm very open and honest. But I'm very transparent and, and I just try to keep it I try to keep it really casual as opposed to giving the same like cookie cutter Each, yeah. question response. You know, how was your day today? Like, what did you do at school today? Like, yeah. I feel like that's the thing like you hear from recruits all the time, like how 
recruiting conversations are boring or, you know, whatever. And I try to be the complete opposite. I just try to, you know, give them my personality. I try to get to know them as they get to know me. And after the first couple of conversations, like it's not even really recruiting anymore. Like we're just kind of getting to know each other. Yeah, it's a, it is an interesting, cause I always, like you said, I always hear from recruits and hear from kids of, of any sport really. And it's interesting how many teams they hear from. And it's just like, I feel like for me, I was obviously never recruited, but it's like, I would feel like that would get repetitive. That would get tedious to a point. <laughs> be like, all right, I got to take this call. Cause one of my good friends in high school, he was fringe D one guy. And he was just, I would have to step out, call, 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 call. And I'm like, like, what, what are we, what are we trying to gain from this? What are we learning here? So that's, you that's want the kids to want to take your call. Yeah. Like you want them to want to call you. Like you want them to want, to communicate with you. And during that communication, you want them to get really comfortable with you and, and in turn, get really comfortable with what you're like selling kind of without selling, like, and what I'm selling without selling, because, you know, we don't even talk about it that much is LSU and Kim Mulkey. So, I mean, I just think that you want them to want to talk to you and they're not going to want to talk to you, even if they feel like they have to talk to you. Like they're not going to want to talk to you if you're boring. Yeah. I have a, one more coaching question before we move on to, to the real, the real juice. Um, <laughs> was there a moment this year where Kim Mulkey kind of either, I don't want to say taught you something or like, she she had you look at something in a different perspective, I guess, is a way of putting it, where this is your first year with her. Uh, what was – was there a moment or was there anything that stood out about Kim Mulkey and how she approached things? It was all year. It was all year. I can – I guess I could point out a couple, like, specific moments, but it's just her attention to detail, man. I, I think one time in particular, I, I think it was always the first times mm-hmm. of things yeah. – Everybody else on the staff had seen it, but I had never seen it. Like I've, I've never really been around her. And I, I think it was just how direct she is uh, or how direct she was. Uh, she would always, it was one time, <laughs> I think it was in the summer and one of our kids was coming in and that kid, I won't say their name. You'll have to. They, they were, potentially going to be ineligible Mm -hmm. like coming in some of their credits had got messed up whatever whatever like whatever which happens happens a lot more than the fans yes it happens happens a lot more than people realize like that happened and we were like in the you know we were kind of panicking but Mm -hmm. and i just remember coach mulkey texting the group chat and she was like this is happening i just heard about it so this is your fault for this reason. This is your fault for this reason and your fault for this reason. So figure it out. And I remember looking at my phone and I was like, <laughs> the heart dropped. Is this serious? And everybody else was like, it's just coach Mulkey. Like you get fussed at, like it's always going is at some point is going to be your turn. I had never had a boss like be that direct. <laughs> She is so direct with, like, accountability. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what your job is, and she makes it very clear. And I think, like, that's the overall, like, kind of theme of of what I've learned this year. Like, it's just, like, being really direct, being really honest, and holding people accountable. And that's, like, every one of of the coaches, that's every one of the players, that's practice players, managers, that's everybody, everybody. Everybody you can think of gets held accountable by Kim Mulkey. I can tell you another kind of story. We were playing uh, Michigan. I think it was before we played Michigan. Mm -hmm. Uh, And everybody was just kind of – we were nervous about the Michigan game uh, in the second round. And I'll never forget, we were sitting in the coach's locker room before the game. We were getting ready. And she sent – in the group chat, the group chat gets spicy (laughs) – uh, and she sent a picture of her holding. She she's always she was in the the practice gym, and she sent us a picture of her holding the clock that's on the wall, 
Mm-hmm. And she was like, so nobody else noticed that, you know, the time was an hour behind. Nobody was going to set the clock. I had to do that. We got 11 coaches. We we have all these managers, but nobody <laughs> noticed this. I had to notice it. I had to fix it. All right. I guess I can. And it's just little stuff like that. And we, yeah. dang, we got in trouble. But it's the little things like. No detail is too small for Kim Mulkey. And I think that's the main thing that I've learned over the years, over this year, that I'll never forget and I'll always take with me, like, as I continue my coaching journey. Yeah. You bring up that mission game. That I remember the, how big of a deal it was to make the Sweet 16. And it's crazy looking back on it because the whole season, it was obviously Kim I mean, Mulkey at the front of it being like, we just want to, you know, make mm-hmm. the Sweet 16. We want to get one win better which is a very logical thing to say like as the season went on even as y'all were a top five team in the country it made complete sense from a coaching perspective being like we have to win one more game one more game um but looking back on it now after a national championship it's like the nerves the intensity i remember going that michigan game scouting michigan i was watching the michigan like you know they got the size this and that she inserts pool uh the zone like all that stuff i was worried about they win the Mm -hmm. game and it's like all right this is a big deal and I remember telling people on the board, like, don't even worry about Utah yet. Like, this is a big deal. This is a accomplishment. Yes. And then, you know, you go on a run to win the whole thing. I mean, it's right. it's right. it's amazing looking back on it, how we forget the, the small things of how yeah. you get there. Um, Let's talk about uh some of the transfers here. Um, okay. I talked with Starkey about how good they are. So I don't need your, your scouting reports on them. <laughs> um. I want to get into more of like how it happened of how you, how we got them in there, how okay. you get them to LSU. Okay. Starting with Haley, obviously, I mean, her resume speaks for itself. Everybody knew uh, how good she was. And, you know, after three years at Louisville entering the portal there, um, I think she said on uh, when she talked to Taylor Rooks, it was like South Carolina, Stanford, LSU. Like those were three very much in contention here. What was it like getting her to LSU? I think you always with, but you hear with every kid, every single kid in the country is like getting in the portal. You hear it, so you you hear it. You don't really pay it any mind. Uh, I remember the the morning she went in the portal, uh, and she went in the portal, and she was in there under do not contact. So we weren't thinking anything of it. Uh, she sent Moki a text. She sent Moki a text. I think later on that night, it made. At some point, she sent Moki a text. And from there, I think that we just, we just did what we do. Like, we got everything set up. Like, we we all kind of talked to her. Uh, She was familiar. She was familiar with Moki. She was familiar with, with the staff because, you know, her high school recruitment came down to Baylor and Louisville. Yeah. Uh, So she was very familiar with Moki. Uh, I think everybody knows the similarities between, you know, the, the them and how feisty they are and the blonde pigtails yeah. and or braids or whatever. And like they see the similarities. And I, I think that now looking back at, at all that, like they're actually like a lot more similar than I thought they would be uh, just in how they are. But uh, she came to campus. She didn't want to come to campus at first. Uh, She felt like she didn't need to take any visits. But she came to campus. She was there for a day, not even a full day. Yeah. Uh, She came in. We did it up, you know, in in LSU fashion. Uh, Got there. She enjoyed herself. I don't know what was happening, though, Uh, because we were all kind of like, okay, she's going to commit on the visit. Like, like that's what we're waiting. We're waiting on her to do it. And she kept disappearing. And we found out kind of more later, like she was talking to her dad. And that was funny. Like that was funny to like, even like hear. Yeah. Uh, but Moki was nervous. Moki was I, ner- We were nervous. I feel like I would have been nervous when she kept disappearing on the phone. I would have been like, she talking to South Carolina. She talking to somebody. Yeah, else. we didn't really know. We didn't know what was going on, but I mean, she ended up like later on that week. I was out recruiting. Yeah. I was out recruiting and Mulkey called me and she was like, she committed. Don't say anything. Like she's putting it out whenever she's putting it out. 
and then she put out like the super cryptic 11 <laughs> post right in Haley fashion uh and broke the internet right yeah. so that was Haley uh with Anissa all we had heard was that Anissa was going somewhere else right yeah. to the other school yeah, and I recruited Anissa in high school. So I was familiar with her AAU coach. I was familiar with her mom. I was familiar with her. Uh, so I just kind of, you know, because I, I, we were told that it was a done deal. Mm -hmm. She knew where she was going. It was over. And yeah. I was like, let me see. Let me just yeah. see. Let's just, just send a text. Send a text. Uh, yeah. So I, I reached out. I, I talked to, to everybody I needed to talk to. And when I talked to her and we kind of got to talking, I felt like she was like really receptive of kind of what we had to offer and, and kind of what we wanted to do and how we wanted to use her and how we could help her out and how she could help us out and everything like that. Uh, and then she went out to, to USC and she came to visit us and we knew she had one more visit. Uh, and, the visit was great. The The visit was great. I, I think that she hit it off with the girls. I think that she really like vibed with, with our coaching staff. I think that what we could offer was exactly what she was looking for. And she called me the, the, she got back on a Sunday, Monday, whatever day it was. I think it was mm -hmm. a Sunday. She called me and she was like, Hey, what's up? And I was like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, can we uh can we get on a Zoom? What are y'all doing at five o'clock? And I was like, nothing. What's up? <laughs> he was like, can we get on a Zoom call? I was like, yeah, I send it out. And at that point, I got off the phone. I called Moki. I was like, what yeah. are you doing? And she was like, nothing. I was like, what are you doing at five o'clock? And she was like, what do I need to be doing at five o'clock? I was like, Anissa just called. She wants to get on a Zoom. Usually, you kind of know what that means. Yeah, it's one thing or another. Like, yeah. So when she said that, like, gathered everybody up, you know, I went to Mulkey's house. Uh, she committed. And yeah. we got both of them. Was... Exactly what we were kind of trying to do. Like, it it just kind of happened. Yeah. I'm curious, because uh, this was the case with both players. Were you surprised at all at how engaged the rest of the team was, like, in their visits and how just in just overall trying, like, the um, excitement to try to get them here like w was that surprising at all nope that's how they are mm -hmm. like they they want they want like, to, one thing to tweet it's one thing to tweet but it's another thing to show obviously be at the official visit like be there like be like the whole way there. nah like I, I i wasn't surprised like i and they have stuff going on and we get mm -hmm. that and we try to work with them and i remember going back and forth with angel about all right we need you on this yeah. day yeah. to not be out of town. Not like, being Jay, we need you on this day to not be out of town. Uh, and they were great about it. They were great about it. They want really good players to come here. Uh, they want to know who we're trying to bring in. And they want to be a part of it. And so it was easy. Like, it, it didn't surprise me at all. Like, when, when we have visits, like, they come up to the office beforehand and they learn all about them. And, you know, they know a lot of them from social media or from, you know, seeing them on TV. Yeah. Some of them play with them in all-star games, whatever. So they, they understand who they are anyway, but they're really involved. We have a really good group of girls when it comes to, like, being excited when a visit happens. Yeah. So now that y'all have, I mean, the roster pretty much, uh, what about this team are you most excited to see? I'm excited to see two things. I'm excited to see how competitive the newcomers are in regards to the returners. I'm excited to see that. Uh, I think that, and it's funny to say because we won the national championship, but like, I think that this team will be a little bit more competitive when it comes to like day-to-day -day practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see it. I, I think that we have a lot of kids who are going to have to fight for minutes this year. 
So I'm excited to see what that looks like, like, and, and who is going to kind of rise to the top of that. And I'm also excited to see, you know, how hungry we, we are to, to kind of do it again. Like, are we complacent? Are we cool with what happened last year? Or do we really, really want to like go out there and, you know, do it again? Yeah, that's that's the one thing I've I was I would be like questioning that if Kim Mulkey wasn't the head coach. That's the thing. It's like yeah, because it is for a team obviously of Angel Flage. You know, it, you bring back a, a, a large core of it, and now it's like all right, if we lose a game in January, you know, maybe that we're not supposed to lose. You know, then it becomes like all right, now we're like you said before. It's like the, you're the hunted now, right. to where now every single loss is magnified every single loss is not supposed to happen. And so now it's like, how do you bounce back from that? And that's an interesting, it's always an interesting standpoint. It's always an interesting approach to me, but I'm just like, Kim Mulkey as a head coach just saves me a lot of stress as far yeah. as like, I'm not worried Dang. about it. But it's just how, like she knows what to do at this point. If this yeah. was a, if this was a rookie coach, if this was a coach that's been in the league for, or in the game for like six, seven years and hasn't won anything, I'd be like, it's a real concern, but mm-hmm. she's, Kim Mulkey, Gino and Oriyama, it's like, you don't worry about that. Yeah, me. they got so. it. They, <laughs> they know what to do. So I just, I do, I try to do my part. And then when it comes to that, I'm just kind of like, mm. <laughs> Mulkey will figure it out. Exactly. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about just the team and I, in theory, how they're, how it's kind of situated now. Because I think the flexibility y'all will have this year is really it, it's really fun. It's mm-hmm. really and last year, it, the past two years LSU, it's been very much you know, cookie cutter in a way of being like, yeah. hey, we got the days at the five, every East four. We know we kind of know what we're doing here. This year, it's Angel Reese, obviously um, Anissa Morrow, Haley Van Lith. Like you have players that can play multiple positions now. Mm-hmm. Is that an interesting? Is that a story? An interesting thing for you going into the season? Be like, all right. Because we can, this is kind of a ball of clay in a sense for a coaching staff. We can move them however we want, how well, however it fits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's exciting. I think that uh, we have an idea of kind of what we want to do, but I think that there are a couple pieces that that we feel like we can kind of play around with. I think because Angel is Angel and she's mm-hmm. so good, I think that we kind of know like, all right, you can play here and we can work with the pieces around you. Like, I, I think that we kind of know what we want to do with Haley, uh, but things may work out different in a in another way, right? But I think we know what we want to do with, with most of them, but, you know, Anissa can play the, the three and the four. Yeah. You know, I think Angel can play the three, four, or five, she, yeah. one. She can really play whatever you want to put her at, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think that the interesting thing that it's the freshman, like it, it's going to depend on what the freshman can come in and do and, and how prepared they are. Uh, we brought in Aaliyah Del Rosario early to, to try to get her ready because she's going to be the, the biggest body that we have. So, I mean, if I think that if, if she's prepared to, to come out and play and she's ready, you would love to have a 6'6", six, six, you know, inside. You know, but you still have Samaya Smith, you yeah. know, who has experience and and who's who's been in those moments, who and who played a lot of minutes with Angel last year. Yeah. So you know, you you can play those two together. You know, you can slide Angel up and and play Anissa with Angel. You know, and you still have Flage, Haley, Katiri, Poa, yeah. and that's before you even name. Haley Van Lith and Michaela Williams and Angelica Velez and Janae Kent. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I think that you said it. Like, I, I think that there is a lot of flexibility with this team. I think that that's really fun. I think as my brain doesn't like cut off to that, like my brain works that way because I'm a recruiter, mm-hmm. you know? So I think that when, when you, like recruit and, and look to put together a roster. I think those are the the problems that you want to have. Like you want to have some players that, that you can play at different spots and you get to see who's good. 
you get to see who's good and you get to see who's good where. And I think that, that that's the thing this past year, Coach Mulkey just showed that she was just – she's better than everybody else at. Like, yeah. she she gets how to do that. She understands what people's strengths are. Uh, and she doesn't put you in a box. She won't put you in a box and she'll allow you to to kind of explore what more you can do. I don't think a lot of people would have played Angel in spots at the three last mm-hmm. year or let Angel bring it up uh, because yeah. she's so dominant around the rim. Uh, and we wanted to do it a little bit more. So I think that that's something that people will see a lot more of this year because of the way our roster is constructed. I think they'll see us playing – a little bit bigger like she she did that a, a, a little bit at Baylor I think that we'll do it a lot more this upcoming year so I'm yeah. excited to see that yeah it's um interesting for me watching Van Lith because I think I want her to play a little bit off ball but she can also obviously handle the ball in a way that is very much you plug her in for Alexis Morris and it makes a lot of sense but mm-hmm. then it's like the shooting the off ball stuff is there too so I'm the, the the flexibility not only at the front court but the back court because like you said pool poa now van lith can push her maybe van lith off the ball at times and just i think there's a lot of exciting ways that van lith can score and then obviously then you throw in michaela williams there and you're just like all Ooh. right just we'll just score all the points yeah yeah <laughs> so that's it's always fun to me to, to roll through that um right I, with michaela specifically i know we You've talked about her ample times. I've written about her ample times. But uh, from like, it's interesting to me, and you can kind of expand on this, but at the very least, she steps on campus and she has a immediate translatable skill in her shooting and her size. And then it's like, all right, then we build from there. Then mm-hmm. it's like, all right, you know, SEC play, you're playing with all Americans. Like, we'll see what else grows from there. But at the very least, she's on the court. She can shoot the ball and she's six one. And mm-hmm. she's strong. I mean, that's a baseline. It she can play. She she really can just play. It's her feel. Yeah. Uh, I think that you see a lot of kids now not have just that natural feel because mm-hmm. you see a lot of kids who they're coming up and they are playing a lot of AAU games and they play in a whole lot of organized games. And I think when you play in so many organized games you you lose a little bit of the the natural feel for the game but a kid like Michaela has has worked out she works out so much she she's one with the basketball I I guess I guess that's the best way to kind of put it because she'll she'll play outside you know she'll get in the gym and just kind of shoot around like she she always has a ball and she's always dribbling around and she's always trying different layups around the rim and different shots. You get what I'm saying? Because that's just the feel that she has. And I think that is the thing that's like, I, I'm, I'm most excited about. Uh, and she's going to be a freshman and, and freshmen do freshman stuff, but man, she, she's just, <laughs> She's really good. She was she was in town for camp last week, and she was up there hours before camp started every single morning working out and in the gym. And it's just – it's amazing to see. And it's – I think because she's so good now, and it's just her, like her natural ability and what she's worked for. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be tough to keep her off the floor because of how hard she works and because of her confidence uh, and because of her willingness to, to learn and listen and grow. Uh, If she text, she'll text, she'll call uh, for the smallest things. She, she called during the season one time, it was after a game. She called me in the locker room. She was like, Hey, uh, what is that that y'all are yelling uh, when the shot clock gets to this, and what are y'all doing? Like, what does that mean? And it's little stuff like that, that that a lot of kids just don't even pick up on or, you know, don't really care about. But it's Michaela Williams, man. She She's ready to come in, and she's ready to do what we recruited her to do. Like, we weren't the national champions while we were recruiting her. Yeah, You know, we didn't have Angel Reese, you know, during the, the meat of her recruitment. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't have a lot of these players, so – 
we were bringing her in to take us from here to here. And she still feels that way. Like whether we won the national championship or not, like she's coming in with the the thought process and the focus that I'm coming here to like do this for my home state and, and to, to take my, my home team to a completely different level. And that's what I'm excited about because she still feels that way. And, and yeah. she talks, she talks like it too. Uh, <laughs> and whenever they talk about it, that's when I'm like, all right, I hear you. I want to see it though. Yeah. yeah show and, me. And I, I think that, I think that we'll see it from her. Yeah. Well, you better get back in shape. Cause she's going to probably go right at you, man. Yeah. She she'll try. She's, <laughs> she's going to try. She ain't ready yet. She ain't ready yet. She, she can tell you that though. <laughs> man an hour ago you were like man i gotta get back in shape man and now it's like all right bring it on the competitive juice is still they they start to flow quick right no matter how out of shape i am i still you know i don't i don't play around when when the girls start talking a little bit too much or when it's time for me to go up with them the thing is i've i was for a long time when i moved here i played at la fitness for a while and they got the smaller court you know mm -hmm. like it's like an mm -hmm. court easy then i meet some people and we go play pickup at the high school and the full court i'm like yeah this is this is different <laughs> different I'm gonna need, i different. need to adjust here the full court. <laughs> like the full full court that's what i call it like this is the full, full right court. like i'm right. running up the wing spot up nothing all right we getting back no these are legit sprints here that's yeah. what um, i've been adjusting <laughs> to the past few months of playing like actual full court basketball right like, i just want to go back to la fitness you know, <laughs> i'm cool there <laughs> But um, anyways, man, that's it. We, I appreciate you uh, for coming on, man. This has been a lot of fun. I'm sure the people enjoyed this. Uh, hope I answered all their questions because they were on they were on my tail about uh, they're like, hey, man, you gotta get Redis on. You had Starkey on. Now we gotta get Redis on. We gotta get the whole staff on. So hopefully we'll they can leave me alone a little bit after no, this, won't. guys. Won't. I love you guys. I do. I really, really do. I try to answer all of the questions that I can answer. I'll get on like Instagram live and yeah. they'll be like, who's the top recruit? <laughs> Who are their top schools? Are we going to get them? When are they coming on a visit? I'm like, guys, I can't answer those questions, yeah. but I, that's why I try to tell them like, pay attention to my Twitter, pay attention to my Instagram. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you little, little, you know, cookie yeah, crumbs that you can just kind of follow. That's what I try to give them, but it's it's never enough. But I love them, so it's okay. Hey, well, for everybody listening, I mean, just subscribe to the Bengal Tiger on three, and uh, you know, we we go from there. Yeah, he he, y'all, he. <laughs> I tell him stuff, and and I have to tell him specifically now. Like, you can't put this I, out, or I you don't, can put this out. But you ask now. I you don't break. I, I, well, it was one good, time. Good. One time. <laughs> it was one. We, we don't got. We don't got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't gotta gotta talk rehash. about that. We good. It was a one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, uh, I'll get out of here before we 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 keep going. Um, but appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, for those listening on the audio side, leave a five star rating review. If you're on the YouTube side, subscribe. Um, leave a like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Uh, we'll be back with another episode soon. Uh, we will talk to y'all later.